Hey, what's up guys? JB here. So over on the Japanese side, they are well into their third anniversary, and they definitely started it off with a bang with two brand new 100 cost units. And we're going to be looking at one of those today, and her name is Amnelis. Now, this is someone that we've been seeing in the story for some time now, and lore-wise, this is a very significant character in the Brave Exvius universe, actually being one of the eight sages of Hess. So it is very exciting that she is finally coming to the game as a playable unit. Now, just looking at her, you know, aesthetically, I think she would fit right in next to Cloud, Ranan, and other lightning elements, which of course means that she is going to be part of the water elements. Now, we did actually just review another 100 cost water unit recently in Perine. If you haven't seen that one, I will go ahead and put a link to that one above. But essentially, we are getting two high powered water units, you know, here in pretty quick succession. So I think it is going to be a pretty big power spike for that particular element. Element. Especially since Amnelis is going to be one of the first characters that has access to the level 140 Dream Enhancement system. So with that in mind, let's actually just dive into her kit and see what she's going to bring to the table. So Amnelis is a 100 cost water unit. She is going to be part of our permanent pool of units. She has a base 3-1 movement and she can wear hats and cloth. Her TMR here is actually pretty interesting. It provides the same effect as Terra's Commune with Esper's skill. And similar to Terra, it does have a, just a single use. We've not really seen a ton of Esper summoning strats out there, but it does actually seem like this TMR is an under the radar buff for Terra if you happen to have her, where you could essentially use both this TMR and her own innate ability to get out and evoke, you know, even faster. So I think this is actually a very unique item and I do actually like it for that reason quite a bit. Now moving down into Amnelis's stats here, her HP is very much in line with many other mages out there, coming in at just a bit below the average UR level. Her magic total though is a big highlight for her. She is currently 5th overall in the game at a 413 base value, while her 620 innate value is going to put her 4th overall. For dex and luck, you know, we're looking at very average UR totals here, so definitely nothing to write home about, but it's also not going to be a big weakness for her either. And that's going to put her accuracy also at just an average level there. Though she does actually have a passive boost there that she can use that can bring that innate value up to an above average and admittedly a pretty decent value. Now her base agility is actually a bit on the lower side. She's coming in at just 54. Uh, she does actually get a huge boost on her board for agility. It's a massive 14 boost. It's going to get her up to 68 innate value, and that is going to put her well above the average in that category. Unfortunately, though, she doesn't have any passives that are able to boost that any further. So, so when passives are included and you look amongst all the units, she's actually just coming in at, you know, just around an average level there. Now, aside from those, you know, her crit value is going to be below average, uh, and she's going to be coming in at just around the average level for crit evade as well. Now, in terms of her mastery ability here, it is a very basic, you know, it is just having one effect, but it is actually a very nice effect. She gets 15 area resist. Uh, most units that we see, you know, they generally only having about 10 area resist if they have that in their mastery. So, so I do actually like that one. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Now on the defensive front for Amnelis, we are looking at zero defense and zero spirit. She does have a pretty nice 10% on slash resist, 15% magic resist, and she has a 20% starting missile resist total as well. Now she is positive on strike, which is actually somewhat rare, so she's coming in at five there. Her only real weakness here is gonna be her pierce resistance, and she's coming in at negative 10 there. Pretty solid overall starting resistances here for Amnelis, but that lack of defense and spirit, you know, combined with the lower end health pool here is definitely gonna be one of the concerns that I have for this unit. Now for ailment resist, you know, we are looking at a 50% resist to slow, which is nice. So, you know, that has actually been one that has been a bit more relevant of late. So, you know, there have been actually several units coming into the game that do have that one. Aside from that, she does have 50% to immobilize and 10% to silence, which is always welcome on a mage unit. All right, so as mentioned earlier, you know, Amnelis is actually going to be one of the first units in the game that has access to the new Dream Enhancement system. Now, of course, that could actually be called something completely different when it comes to global, but you know, that is actually what they've been calling it over on the Japanese side, so we're going to stick with that for now. And I have put together a slide here where we can take a quick look at some of the enhancements that she will be getting when she unlocks that. And really the main portion of it is going to be what is essentially a Mastery 3 ability. And you can see that there with the 140 Mastery. And there she's going to pick up 20% Spirit Penetration, a reduction in her skill activation time of 10%, as well as an upgrade to her Job 25 ability. 
And that's gonna actually add an absorb effect as well as make it non-reflective. So that's actually really, really nice. Now, in terms of the potential stats that she can pick up, you know, you can see here, you know, that she is a magical attacker. The stats that are available to her are gonna be standardized based on that role. So any magical attacker would have these same stats available, you know, as part of that dream enhancement. But you can see there, sort of the biggest one that would be jumping out there is that big 180 additional magic that she can pick up. And the stats overall are gonna more or less follow the trends that we saw, you know, within her main stat lines as well, you know, heavily focused on magic, kind of average level, you know, when it comes to HP and, and some of these other stats. Now, I'm actually not going to comment on my feelings, you know, on the system as a whole, you know, here today in this video, but I will include this as a piece going forward on any unit that I look at and review, just so that we have an idea of as sort of the max potential that is achievable, you know, if you decide to go ahead and awaken them further. All right, so moving into the support abilities and counters, and as is custom for, for most units nowadays, we are looking at a passive number one that is really an always on passive. And here, Amnilis is going to have a 12% HP, 40 spirit pen, as well as an always on conditional courage effect. And this one is going to work identical to Katone's Mastery 2 or soon to be Skahal Mastery 2 that we'll see here in Global very soon. And how that works is that essentially if they're above that 70% HP threshold, they're going to have an indispellable courage, you know, on them. Now, of course, if you do deal fatal damage uh, and that courage procs and you're then able to follow up with a second unit, you know, they can be eliminated. So it definitely gives you added incentive, I think, with this unit to run a healer behind them so that, you know, you can be topped off in battle and really make it difficult to deal with that particular mechanic. All right, now building off of that one, you know, we can actually go in a couple of directions here. For an accuracy focus builds, you can opt for scholarly intuition, which is option number two. For a more general build, I think that I would probably use option number five, which is a speed cast equivalent. Amnilis does actually have a number of spells that do have a pretty long casting time. Now she does also have option three here for maybe more of a bulky tankier build. It's going to give her some additional resistances and, and it's actually a couple of resistances that she was pretty strong to begin with. That's going to be her missile and magic resistance. So that could be more of a situational pick, you know, kind of dependent on the meta at the time and who you're going up against. Now options four and six are from her arithmetician sub job. Really of those, you know, only option six would probably be of consideration if you wanted to really take advantage of some of the skills in that sub. Now for counter abilities, you know, as we've seen with many other 100 cost units, she does have a unique one coming in from her new job. And this one has a pretty nice range on it. It's got a range of four. This one actually doesn't do any damage, but instead it will actually try to land two different ailments in both sleep and slow. They're both coming in at a 25% chance. And Amnilis is a character that, you know, since she is a magic damage dealer, she will be running at high faith. You can potentially have a pretty nice chance to land those, especially since you're gonna have two separate rolls at that 25% chance. Of course, you are at that point kind of relying on RNG on top of RNG, but I do think it's a, a pretty interesting counter. And, you know, I think in most cases, I would probably use that one. Now, aside from that, you know, she does have a couple of retaliation based damage counters. Both have actually pretty poor range. So I think in most cases, I would probably opt for the new one, you know, despite the, uh, the RNG issues there. All right, guys, moving into the main kit here now, and we're gonna start with her buffs as always. And actually both of them here are gonna be party buffs. Now, the first one is gonna be an auto heal back that she can provide to the party. And this is similar to the effect that we see on Snow and Bold Leela. This one is just gonna be a little bit less potent and it's actually gonna trigger at 50% health instead of 20%. This is actually an insane ability, guys. You know, not only is it gonna be great for her, but there's just a lot that you can do in terms of team building and strategy, you know, when it comes to this particular ability. And I think it definitely gives you a path to, you know, run a bruiser comp, you know, maybe backed by another support unit, or it's something that you could use to even buff on your tank and kind of make them a bit more survivable as well. So definitely a marquee ability for her, and I, I like this one quite a lot. Now, her second buff is gonna be a three hit magical barrier that she can give to herself and her allies. It's gonna reduce magic damage by 50% for three hits. This is a strong barrier, you know, so it could be very nice ability, you know, depending on the matchup, if you have her kind of more focused going up against magical enemies. Definitely a lot more situational than that first one though, which I can see value in, you know, in pretty much
much any fight. Now for her attacks, the first one is going to be her low AP attack. This one is coming in with a range of 4 and a range height of 1, and it's carrying that standard low 121% mod. This one will dispel re-raise prior to the damage. Always very welcome utility to have, and definitely gives her a nice tool to use versus dark, wind, earth, and light. Probably the four elements that rely most heavily on that particular mechanic. Now her second attack here is going to be a range 4 with a range height of 2. It has a large 220% mod. This one's coming in with two different effects. The first one will completely shut down counter abilities of anyone it hits. And I say anyone because even though this is a single target ability, as you can see here in the graphic, it actually can hit and target up to three different enemies in one cast. So this is a very unique ability and it's an all new mechanic here for War of the Visions. Another interesting thing about this ability is it does actually bypass Runic in a way. Of course, this is a reflectable skill, so you know if you are targeting Celis directly with one of the hits, she will eat that one, but she will not actually be able to eat any that are affecting any teammates that also may be targeted in that particular spell. Now, another thing that I really like about this particular skill is that it is actually single target and can hit multiple enemies. You know, over the past year, we have seen kind of a large uptick in the amount of area resist that is available to you know various units out there where they can actually stack that area resist to a pretty high level 40 50 60 percent you know in some cases so this skill actually provides a very nice way around that and the ability to hit the multiple enemies while actually being checked against their single target resistance instead so this is a very cool skill you know i do like it i'd say the only thing i can really knock on this one is the casting time on it it does carry a fairly long 280 cast speed all right skill three is going to be that large diamond aoe pattern and again we have that large 220 percent modifier and you are seeing it here correctly, guys. This is a two hit pierce attack and it does scale on her magic value. Now this skill also imperils the single target resistance of anyone it hits by 25. I do really love how this skill is setting up that previous skill number two that we just looked at. And it's going to allow that one just to do even more damage to any of the targets that it hits. That magical pierce damage is going to be very difficult to defend against as well. I will say this one is definitely balanced out, you know, similar to the last one by a longer cast speed. You know, this one is coming in at a 200 cast speed. You know, although, you know, with her passive ability, a trust stone, uh, an Esper like Valifor or Siren, you can actually get it down to a two tick cast, you know, relatively easily. And in fact, I actually have come up with a build where she can one tick cast this as well, which is actually very, very strong. Now, skill number four here is another single target ability. It is a range of three, the range height of one, has a large 200% mod. Free damage, it is a general dispel on the target. This one is actually also of the instant cast variety. Now, as we discussed, you know, this skill does get an enhancement when you do bring Amnilis up to level 140, and that's gonna add that 30% drain effect, as well as making this skill non-reflectable. So, and yet another way that she she can actually deal with Celeste and her runic ability. Now, last but not least, we're gonna have her Limit Burst. And this one is another large diamond AOE for Amnilis. And this time we do have a 25 spirit break coming in prior to the damage. So pretty nice limit burst here. You know, it's coming in with that break of the spirit. So it can actually do pretty nice damage. Uh, and the kit overall is very, very nice. You can see it's actually gonna be pretty difficult to mitigate her damage. She has breaks, she has a good mix of both single target and AOE attacks as well. So this is gonna be a very, very dangerous attacker. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at her sub jobs here next. And the main job sub is gonna come in with two more skills. The first one is a self buff. It's actually a little bit disappointing here on this one because it essentially is just an exact copy of, the, of a scholar skill called Law of Speed Reading. And I guess the designers, you know, really wanted her to have access to this particular skill because she does have scholar as well. Now, if you didn't need the magic barrier that we looked at in her main kit, you know, this actually can be a pretty decent skill for her to use. And, you know, it actually can provide her a way to get down to that one tick casting without having to fully gear for it. Now, the second skill here is a blast AOE. It's actually the same pattern as bursting light from Kododama. This is a pretty cool skill. I do like this one. It's actually going to buff her with 40 area resist after she uses it. Now, this skill is 2 AP cheaper than the Diamond AoE from her main kit. So if she's able to line up the same amount of targets, you know, in this particular blast as that one, she would actually prefer to use this one, you know, in that scenario. So it actually could be a pretty decent, you know, sub job here to use, you know, even for autoplay. Now, as we talked about, she does get that Scholar sub job as well. And I think the main draw from this sub job is going to be that Law of Geo Absorption skill. 
That's actually going to give her access to a third damage type, which is going to be magical strike damage. And it's going to be another large diamond AoE for her as well. And of course, that skill does have a drain effect on it. So that's going to give her two very potent attacks that have that drain. That's going to make it all that much easier for her to keep topped off and keep that courage effect that she has online. Now, she does get Arithmetician here as well. Uh, could be maybe more of a niche pick. Uh, maybe if you wanted to have more support access on her, maybe a little bit more healing for the party. But, you know, remember, she will have an attack centric AI. So you're really only going to be able to rely on this one, you know, at the very beginning of maybe a second strike in guild battle. I think, though, it could be maybe a useful choice for manual play. You know, it does come along with CT average and level three disable, which can be very nice skills in, in that arena. So in that regard, you know, I can see, you know, pretty nice use for any of the sub jobs here. It kind of depends on your team and the situation, as always. But I think I would see myself using Scholar here probably most often. Uh, maybe follow closely by her main job sub. All right, guys, moving into future considerations here next. And actually, there's going to be no new Vision card or Esper that's going to be coming along with Amnilis. Really unfortunate in my view. A lot of the early Warriors of the Crystal, you know, did come along with really powerful Espers and Vision cards. And Water in particular desperately needs some new Espers. They've actually not gotten one since Kraken came, and which is an MR Esper. And that was actually quite some time ago that he came into the game. So, you know, at this point, I'd say it's really dire straits you know when it comes to water espers and i really hope that they do get one you know pretty soon but you know we are getting a new piece of equipment here coming along with amnilis this one is the whale whisker it's a new rod and here i'm going to highlight the magic version but i do actually think an aim version of this actually could be pretty nice as well you know due to one of the passives that it has but in the magic version you can see here it's got a pretty decent base magic on it at 170 and it does carry an unconditional 15 magic attack passive for anyone that can wear it now for a small handful of stave based classes which which does include Amnilis's job. This does have two additional passives, and that is gonna be 15 accuracy, as well as a huge 30% magic boost. So this is a pretty nice rod, you know, especially for Amnilis. The 30% magic in particular is gonna allow her to potentially forego something like the Galmia coat and use something else instead, you know, maybe something a little bit more defensive. So kind of gives her some nice flexibility there. And like I said, I do like the accuracy version. I think it's pretty solid too. You know, between the base stats and the passives, you know, you can actually get up to 35 accuracy on the piece. All right, so let's take a look at the timeline here next. And Amnilis, like I said, is gonna be coming as part of that third anniversary. And for us here in Global, we're looking at that in kind of just under four months from this point. Now here on our side of the game, you know, we did actually just get Sharice this week. Uh, she was actually pushed up, you know, in the timeline, you know, just a little bit. And I think that's actually lining up for us to potentially get Summer Helena and maybe even Dark Ramu here over the next one to two weeks. Now, in terms of other things to look at, you know, in terms of the water element here along the way, maybe six weeks or so prior to the third anniversary, you know, we do have Perrine. There is actually no water-based vision cards, you know, coming into the game that I'm aware of. And actually, there's only one job-based vision card that I could find. Uh, and that's actually going to release at the third anniversary alongside her. And that's actually Sephiroth's card that, you know, she can actually take advantage of some of those effects. Now, in terms of the elemental wheel adjacencies here, the only thing that Lightning is getting in this time span is going to be Summer Helena. And like I said, I think we're going to be looking at her as soon as next week. Now, even before Yuffie was introduced into the game here recently, Fire was actually seeing a decent amount of play, you know, not only because of that unit, but because of the really nice vision card that comes alongside him in that Dragon Quest collab. Now, Fire is even getting further powered up at the third anniversary with Yuffie's vision card to really enable high-end evade play for the elements. But also Dark Ifrit, which is coming in, which is going to enable some dual element play, you know, with Lightning. I do think that the simultaneous buildup of both Water and Fire is actually kind of a bummer in a way. It's definitely raining a little bit on Fire's Parade. Uh, we definitely haven't seen this kind of quick response, you know, in terms of the buildup of winds, lightning, dark or ice over the past year. So I do think it's kind of unfortunate, you know, for Fire, which, you know, really hasn't had all that much time to shine on its own as an element. Especially when you think about Evade, this is more of a niche play style currently, uh, something that we're very accustomed to building against and you know, with all the highly accurate characters in the game. I'd say even more so when the ones propping up that Evade team are just a trio of 90 cost units. I do still think that Fire is pretty good and, and I do think admittedly it's a pretty good Evade team, but you know, unless we actually see some 100 cost Fire units coming into the game with some significant abilities, 
I think that these two 100 cost water units are really kind of shortening the legs on that potential fire meta or any semblance of that really, to be honest. We'll see how it pans out though. You know, we are getting more of these job-based vision cards. So eventually we're gonna have to start thinking more about the job-based meta. You know, it is still very early. We don't have a ton of those cards. So, you know, I think that is gonna be taking just a little bit longer than we'd like, you know, at this point. All right, guys, so here is a mock build that I've put together for Amnilis. And with all that talk about evade, this one is going to be an evade hunting water team. And this one would be to go up against that triple fire team we were just talking about with Yuffie, Sorrow, and Valentine's Ildira. Now, Ildira's Limit Burst is actually a very scary ability, and it does actually allow them to potentially chain off, you know, a bunch of slash attacks. So it's definitely not a walk in the park by any means. You know, if things actually line up for that fire team with that limit burst, you know, it actually can take down, you know, maybe one or all of your units. Now for this particular party, you know, I will be going with a double bruiser setup and I'm actually gonna be pairing Amnalus here with both Perinay and Aerith. And actually water will be the first element in the game that will have access to two different 140 units. And they're actually gonna be followed closely on that by both the fire and the dark elements. Now for equipment here, I'm using the all new whale whisker that we spoke about. I'm gonna pair that with a plus six Alex ring for that huge accuracy boost. And then I do have dark Phoenix shoes here for that TMR. Now, if you don't have this particular TMR, you know, I'd say, you know, any TMR that you have that has a good combination of both accuracy and agility would work pretty well. Now, moving down here into the rest of the builds, and I think maybe a few of you out there are wondering why Odin is here. And it's just because he is the best Esper in the game, you know, when you need to be highly accurate, you know, even for a magic-based attacker. You know, not only do you get those high accuracy nodes, but you do get the human killer, you know, which does work on any type of attack, you know, so long as you are targeting a human. In this example here, actually, Sara would be immune to that human killer, but uh, the other two fire units, you know, would be susceptible to it. Uh, and then on the board, we are actually picking up some nice slash resist there too. And also that great agility that comes along with him. So you really can't go wrong, like I said, for any attacker with this particular Esper, if you're really trying to be accurate. Now for vision cards, I am starting off with my trifecta setup. We have agility coming in from the vow to meet again card. We have single target resistance coming in from tune up time. And then we have area resistance coming in from winter holiday party. Now, Winter Holiday Party does have that 35% dex on it, which will boost my accuracy up by just a bit more. But I'm also picking up accuracy from both Tune Up Time and Faint Light as well. Now, for Amnilis in the sub slot, I am using Siren there for just a little bit of fire resist and water attack on top. Now, moving down into the Trust Stones here, and I am just a bit worried about that potent slash damage. I'm also worried about that crit damage as well. So I have built against that here in my first stone. Now the L stone is gonna be my standard HP and luck. And then on the P stone, I actually have put blind resistance here. And that's actually gonna be very important for Amnilis in this build, especially going up against Yuffie. We're gonna be purely relying on her accuracy. She doesn't have a guaranteed hit. And it's actually one of the other reasons I have used Odin here in the builds. Between Odin's 25% and the 25% here on the trust stone, we're gonna be completely immune to the blind effect that comes in on one of Yuffie's skills. And that actually does carry a 40% base chance to land it, which is uh, actually very strong and why you actually need a little bit more than a trust stone to guarantee that you'll block it. Now I am tying all of these effects here into a luck set just for that additional accuracy. Now moving on to the offensive side here on the right. And on my A stone, I'm starting off with that skill activation reduction to lower my cast time. This is actually gonna have her in the two tick range for the majority of her spells. Now, along with that, I am adding that dex effect for just a touch more accuracy. Now adding to that, I do have that spirit and magic res penetration there on the second stone. And then finally, I'm adding in that water attack and healing power. And healing power is another one that's very important for the builds. That's gonna make sure that her drains are coming off just a little bit more powerful. And then of course, any heals that are coming onto her as well. Now, all of these effects here are getting tied into an accuracy set. And you can see here in the stats that that's going to actually put her at a 402% accuracy level. And that is including the accuracy passive that we talked a little bit about earlier. So considering that 402 accuracy level, that's going to have Amnilis here, you know, somewhere in the high 70s to low 80s to hit a balls to the wall fire evade team. Now, of course, that is not 100%, so you know, so you could certainly still get screwed by RNG, but it is a very nice chance to hit nonetheless. Now I am highlighting Perinay here in the builds, but I do actually think that Astrius could work just as well. 
Uh, we do know already he is a very accomplished evade hunter. He can be very accurate in his own right, and he does have 100% hits to fall back on. And of course, he does have a 25 accuracy buff that he could put onto Amnilis and really help her counteract, you know, any evade buffs that the fire team is potentially putting on and kind of counteract that play. All right, so what is the verdict today on Amnilis? Now, this is a unit that can single-handedly carry your damage. Not only does she have large area of effects on multiple skills, but she does have tools that can break spirit or single target resistance to kind of amp up her damage and help finish off any target on any follow-up attack. Now, despite having an overall lack of physical defenses, she does actually bring a couple of very nice defensive tools to help keep her alive and sustained on the battlefield. And that's gonna include an always-on courage effect and similar to Skahal and Katone before her, since that is a conditional effect, it cannot be dispelled. And then in addition to that, she does have that auto healback ability that she can give not only to herself, but to her teammates. Now, in terms of negatives for this unit, the lack of physical defenses that I mentioned, she does have some longer cast times as well, but you know we do have many ways around that there that she can actually get a build down to even one tick casting if you want to. Now, as we talked about, her base agility definitely isn't the greatest either. We did actually see a little bit of the effects of that in the builds. She was actually only just reaching a 103 agility. Now, finally, you know, while she actually does have a pretty nice spirit penetration available to her, especially at level 140, there is just a complete lack of magic resist penetration here available in her kit. So that actually does open the door, you know, to some units out there who can really mute, you know, some of what she's trying to do with a high magic resist value. Even that problem, though, is something that Amalus can get around, you know, like we said, she does have that skill for magical pierce damage. And then if you're using Scholar, you know, she does have that magical strike damage as well. So basically what that all amounts to is that all of these caveats here that we talked about are things that you can very easily build around and overcome, which in my eyes, you know, definitely makes this a very strong and very dangerous unit. All right, guys, so that is going to do it today for my review on Amnilis. I think this is definitely going to be a really strong one and definitely the type of unit that you can save up for and build around. And I think they're definitely kicking off War of the Visions there with year three with a pretty big bang. Now, I would say that she is a bit overshadowed by Sephiroth, you know, who is coming in alongside her. You know, that is just a unit that a lot of people have been waiting for and are super excited about. And it just so happens that he is really powerful as well to boot. Now, I am not going to say that Amnilis here is a better unit than him. But certainly, I think that I would say that she is the more interesting one, you know, in terms of some of the unique abilities and skills that she can bring to the party. All right, so those are my thoughts, but I'm going to hand it over to you guys now. What are you thinking about this unit? Is she good enough for you to pull, you know, even surrounded by all of those limited units and Final Fantasy VII Remake coming in? Or are you just going to be praying for an off banner, you know, down the road? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video today, hit that like button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And that's really all I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.